They forgot about us. What have I done? Run! Stay strong, huh? I'm coming. So this movie was very racially and politically charged, so let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the first purge. I really do appreciate it. And I just want to let you know, um, you probably see it in the thumbnail and you saw it in the title just in case you missed it. For some reason, this is going to be a spoiler field review, meaning I am going to talk spoilers as if you've already seen the film. I am going to talk spoilers up, down, left, right, in and out as if you've already seen the movie. So you have been warned. Uh, one reason I want to talk about spoilers or talk spoilers in this video is one is just the subject matter, the subject material, and two, because this film has been out over a week now. And so, um, you know, there's been a lot of comments online and, um, you know, I just want to, you know, put my two cents out there. But as far as The Purge is concerned, the franchise, this is the fourth film in the franchise. I have seen all films. Um, if you want to say think great things about this franchise is you don't have to see all the other movies. You can see one of them. You can see all of them. You don't have to see them in order because um, the theme is the purge. People are killing people and they have different locations and different times and things like that. So it's just taking place in different uh, points of view in life, um, you know, within this uh, universe or whatever. So um, that's one thing. But like I said, I have seen all films. Um, the first one, I was really, really, really disappointed with that film. I thought it was pretty much horrible. Um, it was a home invasion film. The second one with Frank Grillo, who plays Crossbones in the MCU, uh, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Captain America, Civil War. Um, the first, the second one, 2014, I liked it a lot better. Um, before I saw this one, that was my favorite. And then Purge, the election year, the last one that came out, 2016, 2000 years ago. I said 2000 years ago, two, that, two years ago, 2016. I was disappointed with that film too. Still wasn't as bad as part one. Um, so I was, I liked the second one. Uh, the third one was, um, you know, next. And then the first one was in last place. So when I first saw the trailer, oh, and I, I'm taking my time, guys. I don't know how long this video will be. Um, if you are one of the people that have commented in the past, hey, your, your reviews are too long. Thank you for giving uh, your opinion. I appreciate it. But this video or, you know, may not be for you. So I'm just taking my time. So when I first saw the trailer for the Purge election year, I was like, oh, they're making another Purge movie, really? You know, I was like, okay, I wasn't that excited. And you can subscribe to my channel and go check out the reaction if you like. Um, it's in the videos tab. Um, I didn't check out the cast before I saw it. And so when I'm watching the trailer reacting to it, you know, I see it's a whole bunch of black people. I'm like, oh, snap, black people, yeah, go black people, yes. You know, I'm excited, you know what I'm saying? This is dope, you know what I'm saying? I get to see people that look like me in the movie. You know, um, you know, and, and as far as this universe is concerned, because, you know, we just haven't seen it. And so then I thought about it, I was like, oh, this is the purge, man. So they, it's going to be a lot of killing and death. I hope the black people make it. But I'm just like, all right, you know, what I'm saying, you know, black people. So um, anyway, uh, ended up seeing the film. And let's just talk about, um, you know, just the timeline. Um, this is a prequel. This is the first purge, like the title um, s suggests. And in all the other purge movies, uh, it was a nationwide event. Um, this is not an event. This is an experiment. And well, this is still an event. It's an experiment. And it's only going to be on one island, Staten Island or whatever. And the way they set up the film is, you know, people are poor. People are angry. People are frustrated. And America needs this. And this is just, you know, um, an experiment. You know, we're trying to study psychological behavior and do this and do that. And of course, you always have your organizations behind the scenes to have nefarious plans and things like this and ulterior motives, yada, yada, yada. You got your evil corporate people over here. And then you have, you know, your scientists and your, your psychologists and, you know, your all those, um, you know, good PhDs and things like that. And um, the, one of those, her name is Dr. Updale, played by Marissa Tomei. Her character name is the architect. She's the one that thought all this up. 
Um, and you know, she's the one that I guess you're supposed to kind of sympathize with in a way or kind of in a way, understand where she's coming from, even though you don't, I watch this thing like, this is just disgusting. Like, oh my gosh, this is just savagery. You know, uh, the other gentleman, chief of staff, Arlo Sabian played by patch, uh, Dora or DeRay. I don't know if I pronounce, you know, he's the evil guy. Man, they, they, they did fine. Um, their characters were okay. Um, I'm not surprised with where they went with it. Um, you know, but you know, they're, they're just there. Marissa, Marissa Tomei, she's a, you know, a decent actress. She's Aunt May right now in the MCU. And, uh, you know, she was fine. She was serviceable. Uh, Yelan, uh, I believe I'm saying his name correctly. Yelan, uh, Noel. Um, he was Demetri in this film. He is the main actor. You know, we all know him from Insecure, season one and two. He is the um, one of the ex boyfriends of um, I forgot the girl name in the uh, in the show or whatever. And um, Insecure, I'm gonna I'm not gonna be able to relax until I, I look up her name or whatever. Let me the first purge. I just have to see. I'm sorry, guys. This is this is just gonna this is just gonna bug me if um, I'm I'm gonna shoot myself. No, I'm not gonna shoot myself. But I'm gonna be like, oh gosh, Brandon, you couldn't think of Issa. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I'm tripping. He is the bo- ex boyfriend of her or whatever. And in this movie, like he's a drug dealer. Uh, you know, he moves weight. He moves coke. And I mean, while I think he's a good actress in this movie, I, you know, the way they portrayed him is corny. I mean, they shouldn't be praising, you know, drug lords anyway. But, you know, recently, you know, in this film, his girlfriend or a strange girlfriend um, is her name is Nyla. Uh, she's great as well. Um, I, I want to give her full name is Lex Scott Davis. Um, she, you know, they, you can kind of tell that they had a relationship in this movie. I liked her character, um, in this film. She was also in Superfly that came out a couple of months ago or last month, and she was great in that as well. But, and I, I want to bring up Superfly as well and tie it to her because, um, the gentleman in Superfly, he was a, he, you know, he moved weight too or whatever. But I liked his character much more in Superfly than I, I liked Demetrius' character, uh, Yolanda Noel in, um, The First Purge. The reason being is, is in The First Purge, they just, Dimitri, they just kind of made his, his, his uh, existence a little corny. The way he answers to people, you know, if, if he was in his lair, his, his clubhouse, whatever his, uh, we know wherever he lays his head, somebody come talk to him, you know, we need to talk. All right. My office. And it's like, dude, you know what I'm saying? You too hard for yourself. Chill out. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just the writing, you know, that, um, you know, he was given. I just wasn't a fan of. Um, and Superfly, that guy, he was um, much more humble. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't that flashy, you know? Um, and the first purge, Demetri just kind of, you know, when he stepped on the scene, you know, he just kind of seemed like he expected people to bow down. You know, I'm not saying that he was a, a villain or anything like that. And I don't, I'm, you know, I don't want to just throw him under the bus, but I can't just say that, you know, I liked his character. I liked the actor, you know, but, you know, they could have did a better job, you know, with his role. Um, there's another main character by the name of Isaiah in here, jo- Jovian Wade. I'm not too familiar with his work. Um, he's a young guy, you know, he did a decent job. You know, he was just kind of scary, uh, in the, in this, uh, film for me. But, um, it's, I mean, you go to this movies, you know, because you want to see the murders and the killings and things like that. And it's just so crazy that, you know, they were able to put this film together and how much it relates to um, what is going on right now in the country. Uh, In the intro, I did say that this video is very racially, this film is very racially and politically charged, and it is. Um, I mean, we always have real life commentators pop up in uh, pop, you know, not in pop films, in um, uh, recent films where they have news anchors. You know, sometime I'll see Roland Martin pop up. This one we saw Van Jones pop up. And initially, I thought that we were just going to get, 
you know, just some voiceover, but he was actually in the film commentating on just the craziness of the purge. And, you know, we, we what's going on right now in the country? You know, you have these group of people over here that are just like, hey, we want to do this. But you have this group of people over here protesting and no, this is evil. This is not America. Yada, yada, yada. You know, it, it, sometimes it's a bunch of like white noise and fake outrage and things like that. Same thing in this movie right here. You know, you have people protesting. You have people that actually care and give a crap. You know what I'm saying? And that was a way to pull me into the film. It's something that I actually liked about it is because I could relate to what's going on. So I'm just like, man, are, is this really what's happening? You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all really just going to let this go down right here? And like, this, this is just crazy. Like, why is this normal? You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody should be like, oh, my God, blasphemy. Are you serious? The, you know, we're all going to burn. But, you know, it, it's, it's uh, you know, so it really, you know, it, it, it's able to uh, kind of pull you in like that. Um, you know, and especially dealing with, you know, black and brown issues too. the main dang plot of the movie. If you look at it after the rise of a third political party, the new founding fathers of America. And let's talk about the new founding fathers. They come in here trying to run game on everybody talking about, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans, you know, haven't done anybody good at, at all. And, you know, since the inception of this country. So we, the new founding fathers, will come and, uh, you know, save the day. And hence we going to do this purge and things like that. When, you know, the new founding fathers, y'all the one behind the scenes pulling all the strings, making people fight back and forth. You know, um, anyway, you know, giving this group blaming this group bunch of stupid stupidity. But, you know, that, that's the plot of the movie. After the rise of the third political party, the new founding fathers of America, an experiment is conducted. No laws for 12 hours on Staten Island. No one must stay doing the experiment. Yet there is a $5,000 reward for anyone who does. So they're just taking an advantage of, uh, you know, poor people disenfranchised people people that they put into the ghetto you know what i'm saying and just like hey man just you know you need this 5k we've got this experiment going on you know this is disposable to us you know so that's how they hook people you know what i'm saying and in real life you know people are desperate so i'm just really like okay i really wonder how they're gonna you know gonna do this you know what i'm saying like you know, black people going to come save the day and kill everybody. And we're going to get to that. We're going to get to this. So the setup I'm, I'm, I'm on board with initially, it, it's kind of just like weird and, uh, and just, you know, like just in your face, like, damn, you know what I'm saying? This is like, so what's going on right now in the country? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, uh, I, I was on I was on board with it. I, I was on board with it. You know, then we just get really get to the plot of the film, and I really like what they were doing with it. Um, let me talk about the what the writer was doing with this. It's, his name is James DeMonaco. and so I'm praising him now at the very beginning of the film. I don't even, I don't even want to say the praise. I'm giving him props. He's the director of the first, second, and third film, and also writ. Uh, he also wrote them as well. But the director is uh, Gerard McMurray. I'm not too familiar with his work. Um, when I look at his filmography on IMDb, the only film he's directed is Burning Sands about uh, hazing and exposing that in college campuses. Excuse me. And he's only done two other short films prior to that. Um, you know, but we're going to talk about him in a second. But, you know, right now I'm just like, OK, you know, the, the writing for this is, you know, pretty decent. They on point other than, you know, some of the character arcs and things like that. What I found interesting is in the real world, uh, there are certain groups of people that like to paint black people as violent and ignorant and just don't know what to do with themselves. And you can't, you got to keep them in check. You got to keep them in place because if we let them loose, they're just going to run wild and blah, 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 do all type of crazy stuff. So. That was the idea is that, you know, there's just going to be a bunch of black people in this film that's just going to run amok and riot and rob and this and that and da 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 da. And no, that is not what happened in the movie. The black people was like, I'm not finna uh, go out here and get my head busted open. I mean, you had maybe a knuckle hair here and too. Like, hey, I want to go back and get all my ATM fees. You know what I'm saying? Them 250s and up, be tr you know, adding up or whatever. You know, I could have been spending that the dollar movie at the burger place. I don't, well, don't, I don't want to curse burgers. But anyway, I was just being silly. But you had a few knuckleheads here and there. But for the most part, people like, hell no, I'm finna go to church or I'm finna chill over here in the house and parlay, uh, watch, watch me some Netflix and, you know, try to chill and get this 5K or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So they just didn't depict black people as a bunch of animals and things like that. You know, I mean, the the murder and the killing started and, th you know, and, and that, that was fine. 
talked to my homeboy about this on Facebook. He was kind of pissed off about this. He was like, see, that's the problem, B. You know what I'm saying? Black people need to wake up and get it together because this movie pissed me off because during a serious time like The Purge, what everybody wanted to go, they want to go out in the street and party, you know, and not take things seriously and mount up and things like that. I was like, well, I can kind of understand where you're coming from. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just glad that they didn't depict them. Everybody just going to be raping and murdering and killing each other and things like that. No. So uh, what do they do in the movie, man? The, the white people get mad. They racist. You know, the, the Marissa, Marissa told me she was like, well, hey, you know, this was someone expected. She wouldn't take notes. If, oh, why are they not killing each other? We need them to kill each other. Overpopulated. You know, we got to take care of it like this. It, it's just vicious savagery. I mean, these people are crazy. They're sick. They were sick in this movie. People like that real in real life that are just sick or whatever. So, I don't want this thing to be too long, to be honest with you. So, I'm going to get to the... So, the characters, they were cool. The setup, it was cool. I was engaged. I was interested. I was really, in, you know, just, you know, really wanting to see where, how things were going to turn out. You know, how they were just going to set things up. And so, this is where the movie just kind of made me uncomfortable. Because it got a little too realistic. So, we all know, I mean, you got white supremacists and you got white extremists. White supremacists can be... You know, basically everybody calling the cops on black people right now for barbecuing and trying to swim and sell water and things like that. You know, they could be a policeman, fireman, the teacher, your co-worker, could be a judge, can be the person to drive the bus, person that, you know, swipes you, you takes your ticket at the movie theater, whatever. A white extremist is Dylan Roof. That goes into a church and actually, you know, slaughters innocent black people. They had a scene like that in this film or whatever. And, you know, I was just like, man, that's messed up. But it was the government or whatever behind the scenes make trying to make them seem like this was some gang violence or something like that. But, you know, no, it wasn't. You know, it was some um, KKK and, you know, just some um, underground uh, militia military coming in trying to pretend like the gangs. And, you know, the KKK in this film could have been real, too. It could have been set up by the government, too. You know, in this film, uh, you know, but they they had that just real, just really innocent black people uh, getting slaughtered for no damn reason, and I don't like that. And then Gerard McMurray is a brother. I'm like, hold on, bro, you you know, I can you know James DeMonico. I don't know how he feels about whoever, you know what I'm saying, but he's not. Uh, and I'm like, you know, he wrote this, and but he also wrote another one of my favorite films of all time, The Negotiator, with uh, Samuel Jackson, and I'm just like dry man like why you got black people just dying like this in the blue you could have you know toned it back you know just a little bit they got kkk in here just rolling down the street with assault rifles and you know in the back of the truck pointing at the people going to black people just you know trying to shoot them up in the shop black people having to defend themselves you know what i'm saying and that was nice that was cool and black and and uh demetri and his gang you know they they uh came and saved the day it's just basically the white people or the racists or the government, they mad that black people are not murdering each other and they can't spread this propaganda. So they just like, OK, we got to sell this. We're going to send in our own troops and, and, and sell propaganda. Demetri and his gang of folks just like, hey, man, this is bullshit. You know, we got to go in there and save the day. Hoorah. You know what I'm saying? Let's get all our guns and, you know, and go in there and protect the neighborhood. I'm like, cool. I'm on board with this. Ah, black power, black empowerment. Yeah. We, I, you know, I don't, we coming together. Great. That That's that's what I want to see. And then I was just getting excited or whatever. And, you know, they did go in there and save the day. But there were just too many uh, black people that just died for no damn reason. I mean, they had an apartment building. It was... Uh, like at least 20 floors and one group of people that we were supposed to root for was on the 14th floor hey they're on the 14th floor going floor by floor by floor just executing people you know i'll be there you know you got some time so it's just some people dressed up man going four by four going floor by floor kicking down black people and brown people's doors but most black black baby people and just shooting them up in their homes you know what i'm saying that's just effing disgusting and i'm just sitting here like what the hell, man? I don't want to see this crap. I don't want to see this. Yeah, it was some black people that did get some revenge here and there and stabbing the next and who, 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 and all that good stuff. But I was sitting there just like, okay, I was pumped. I'm just like, it's a bunch of BS. When is movie going to end? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not feeling this at all. I do not want to see black people get their ass kicked, especially if this is not a, well, I, I'm saying a realistic movie. Man, the way things are going, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. If this actually happened one day in 10, 20 years, I, I just wouldn't. I hope it don't. 
But at the same time, I want to say this is just a movie, but is it just a movie? Because I, I just like the climate right now in the real world is very tense. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's getting worse. You know, uh, you know, they could have made this movie to just, you know, intensify that even more to where I'm in the theater upset and mad, like walking out the theater. Oh, these stupid white people. Oh, they racist. Oh, there go one right there. There go one right there. He could be one. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not finna let the movie manipulate me or anything like that. Play with my mind and all that. And don't let it do that to you either, even though uh, this does have a lot of time with the real world, especially what's going on right now. But uh, I mean... My expectations for this film was mediocre. The characters was decent. Um, the setup was nice. We could have, you know, there, there was some nice revenge that black people got. But overall, I really just did not care for just seeing, you know, black people getting slaughtered like that. You know what I'm saying? There, there was one part where they really made a team of black Avengers in the hood finna go save the day. And they just got mowed down by a bunch of drones. I'm like, man. What the hell is this? It's just like kind of in Black Panther, how they kind of dangle the black revolution in your face and they snatch it away like you scorpion off Mortal Kombat. Get over here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I mean, it was entertaining, but, you know, it's nothing that I really want to see again. Um, you know, if I were to rate the first purge out of a one out of ten. I'm going to give it a five out of ten. Yes, a five out of ten. But guys, that is just my spoilery opinion for The First Purge. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did it turn you on? Did it turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you didn't, that's fine, uh, but you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of The First Purge. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.